Welcome to Geechee's World. We just had some news come out about uh, Eric Holder, the killer of Nipsey Hussle. As you know, his uh, famous attorney that was representing him, Chris Darden, he just came out and said that he was going to have to resign from uh, handling Eric Holder's case because of death threats. I mean, what did he expect? Nipsey was a effing god in Cali and around the world as well. I mean, that had to come with the territory, him representing and getting death threats. I don't know why he seemed like he was surprised. But let's get into the uh, article by TMZ. Nipsey Hussle's alleged murderer is going to need a new lawyer. Christopher Darden is quitting the case and it sounds like a wave of death threats to him and his family were just too much. Darden says he's filed a motion to withdraw as every holder's defense attorney. Holder happens to have a hearing scheduled for Friday in L.A. Superior Court. And Darden says it's the last time he will appear in the court in court on the case. Darden, who famously prosecuted O.J. Simpson in his double murder trial, says he's received death threats since taking hold of his case. And the flood of hatred reminded him of the O.J. case. As he put it, just as they were in 1995, cowards never change. These days, these cowards don't send letters. Instead, they sit anonymously behind keyboards threatening the man's mother and children. Darden hinted he might reveal more in the future by exactly why he's bailing on Holder, a.k.a. shitty cuz, but made it clear to his haters that he won't forget. To those who issued those threats to my children, please pay close attention so there is no misunderstanding. Fuck you. The truth is, Darden's been mercilessly berated ever since agreeing to defend the man accused of killing someone as beloved as Nipsey. One threatening tweet said, Remember, it was written in the book of life that the children shall suffer from what their parents do. Darden wants to make the point that under the Constitution, everyone deserves a defense in court. He says, after centuries of a history of black men hung from trees without trial, or after the thousands of cases of black men tried, convicted, and executed without a counsel, I cannot understand why in 2019 some people would deny a black man his Sixth Amendment right to counsel of his choice. What exactly did Darden expect to happen? I mean, did he think he was just going to waltz into the courtroom, go to trial, and not have any backlash, any death threats? We're talking about Nipsey Hussle in Los Angeles. When I first heard about him representing the killer, I was confused. I was scratching my head wondering who, what, why, where, when, and how. And reading the comments and articles, I wasn't the only one. I mean, everyone was puzzled. Why would he represent him? I am curious if Christopher Darden got death threats because he's a black man. I wonder if he was white, would he get those same death threats? Let's take a listen to Christopher Darden himself and hear the words come out of his mouth and what he got to say in his interview with TMZ. Well, you know, it's the same old things. 1995 all over again, except this time some folks are upset that I should represent a a probable uh, mentally ill African-American man who's charged, uh, charged with murder. And, uh, you know, I've received threats. My family, my children uh, have been harassed and threatened. And, uh, you know, it's just really outrageous. I'm really kind of sick of it. I don't know when the people are going to realize that, you know, I'm already battle-tested. You know, I don't play that. It doesn't interfere with what I do. I continue to practice law and represent my clients to the best of my ability. But, but you have these people who are saying these things and really you know, creating security issues for me and my family. Nobody can bully me. No one can bully me when it comes to you know, representing my clients and doing what I think is right. You know, I'm a lawyer sworn to uphold the Constitution. That's what I do every day. And included in the Constitution is the Sixth Amendment and the right of every man charged with a crime to counsel uh, of his choice. For people to turn on it and say, oh, well, you know, we'll decide who gets to have a lawyer and who doesn't based on who they allegedly kill or whether we like them or not. You know, that's contrary to the Constitution. It's contrary to our history. And, you know... And people need to say something. For every hater out there, there are a hundred uh, uh, people in the black community that support me, support my work, and, and they support my family. And so, no, I don't feel betrayed by the, uh, the black community. 
you know, I'm going to go get grits and eggs when I finish my court appearances today in the hood like I do every Friday. A lot of us are really missing the point. When we look at his death, uh, it is agonizing and painful uh, for all of us. And it was for me, you know. I was posting things about it before I was. I even uh, represented Mr. Holder. And, I, and, I, and if everyone really feels like, hey, this is not a death that should be in vain, that there is a lesson that should come from it, a movement that should start as a result of it, then that movement ought to include getting rid of the guns, getting rid of the killers, getting the guns and the killers off the streets of South Los Angeles. And I don't hear that. I hear a lot of wasted rhetoric about all these lawyers.